Hi everybody, welcome to Plain Jane. I'm Jane and I want to share a quick and easy paint project with you today using my chalk paint. I think you're going to love it. It's really simple. Um, we're going to be painting onto these old glass plates. Now the thing about these is that if you go to any op shop there are literally hundreds of them on the shelves. Nobody seems to want them anymore. I think they're, they've gone out of fashion. There's literally piles of them. So here I am at the op shop. As you can see, there were absolutely hundreds to choose from. I managed to get three of these leaf shaped plates. They were $2 each and I thought they'd look really great painted. And then I also picked up this other longer piece which looked a bit like a seed pod and I thought that would go nicely with the leaves. The trick is we're going to be painting onto the back of them. And what that means is that the colour shines through and the, the glass really accentuates the colour and it looks amazing. I think you're going to really like it. So some people get a little bit worried about painting onto glass. They, um, I do get a lot of questions about whether the paint really does stick to glass. And the answer is yes, it definitely does. Don't be scared. Um, there's two things you need to remember. The first one is wash the glass really well, especially if you have picked it up at the op shop, you don't know, it could be covered in grease and grime. So give it a good wash. And then when you're applying your paint, let the first coat dry really well before you go on with the next one. And that way you're not going to be pulling off the first coat when you go on with your brush for the next one. Now, I did just want to show you another project a glass project which I painted. This is a year ago, I painted this jug and the paint has held up really, really well. So I just wanted to show you, you might want to cover your ears if you don't like scratching sounds, but I just want to show you the scratch test to show you how well the paint has stuck. So I'm going to scratch my nail down here. And as you can see, the paint is not going anywhere. It's stuck really, really well. So don't be scared to paint onto glass. So the plates that I picked up are, um, I've got, managed to get three that look like leaves. And then this one here, I thought it looked a bit like a seed pod and I thought that would go well with the leaves. So I'm going to paint that one in some earthy colours to look like a seed pod. And then the, obviously the leaves I'll be painting in some nice greens. And I'm going to try a few different techniques on the back just to add a bit of interest so they're not all just one flat colour. Now the thing to say about these plates is you might not find exactly the same design, but it doesn't matter. The idea really is just that you can play around with some different techniques and build up some colour on the back of them and um, create your own design. So for my project, I had a pretty good idea of what I wanted to do with the leaves. Obviously I was going to do a couple of different greens. And then for the seed pod, I wasn't quite sure, so I just had a look on Google at some images of seed pods and I noticed that there was a few different colours in there and a diff few different textures. So I've chosen three earthy neutral colours and I'm going to apply the paint in some different ways to build up the colour. So I've got paper bark, dusty donkey and then mud pie, which is a kind of chocolatey brown. And then for the greens, for the leaves, I've got kelp and gooseberry. Now, the thing about painting onto these really is that we're painting in reverse. So normally when we paint layers on furniture or something, we know the first layer we put down isn't really going to be seen because it's going to be buried under the subsequent layers that we're painting. But in this situation, the first thing we paint is going to be the first thing we see. So it's almost like painting backwards. So you just need to remember that when you're putting on your different layers. Okay, I'm gonna get started. And I think the first thing I'm going to do is one of these leaves. So I took this beautiful deep green called kelp and just a little bit on the end of my brush because I wanted a nice thin layer for this first coat of paint. My idea was that you'd almost be able to see through this to the gooseberry, which will be the next green that goes on top once this is dried. So I've tried to keep it really thin and you can just see I let it build up in the details. I feathered my brush really lightly so that I didn't get any brush marks in the finish. I 
I did all three slightly differently. This one I used barely any paint at all on the end of my brush, so really I was almost dry brushing and just letting that colour build up in all the little details. Then I took a soft cloth, just some t-shirt material, and just wiped back very gently any of the paint that was left on the raised areas so that it was only sitting down in the details and left a lovely lacy pattern in the glass. Once that had dried I took this lovely bright zesty green called gooseberry and I painted a solid layer of that over the top of the kelp. I wanted this to be a really solid backdrop for the kelp so I actually did two coats of the gooseberry. Now for the seed pod, I did Google some images just to see what uh, some of the seed pods really looked like. And I noticed that there were a few different layers and textures. So I'm just gonna try applying the paint in a few different ways and um, build up some, some layers. So I want to have some speckly bits on the top layer. So that's gonna be my first layer because we're turning this over. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just gonna get some of this dark brown mud pie and I'm just going to flick some paint so that I get some sort of dark speckles in my, on my first layer of paint. I'm just gonna use a toothbrush to do that. Now, if your paint isn't flicking very well, you can just water it down a little bit. So you might need to get a feel for the texture of it and you might get a bit messy. So be prepared to maybe put on an apron. So I've just mixed in a tiny little bit of water. I'm going to put this up against this jug because it's much easier to do it in a vertical position. And then I'm just gonna get my toothbrush and I'm just gonna flick it. Let me show you. I've just got some, hopefully you can see, I don't know if the light's very good, some lovely fine speckles. Actually, you might see it better on that side. They'll show up better when we've got the next layer of paint on, but you can see I've got some really fine speckles and I'm gonna let them dry before I put the next layer of paint on. So when I was looking at photographs of the seed pods, I noticed that quite a lot of them seemed to have a pale coloured bloom over the surface, which I thought looked really nice. So I've taken these two colours, a tiny amount, that's probably too much in fact, paper bark and dusty donkey, and I'm just going to very lightly apply it over the top of the speckles. I'm using a sea sponge, but you don't have to rush out and buy one of these. You could use um, scrunch up a bit of t-shirt material, something nice and soft, um, and, and just tap it on that way instead. The main thing is, I think, we just want to use very little paint so that it's just a very light bloom and it won't be covering the whole surface. So if you're using a sea sponge, just make sure you make it damp first so it's nice and soft. I used just a tiny amount of paint and actually tapped most of it off onto the paper plate before gently just tapping it onto the surface of the glass. I used both colours on the same sponge. I wasn't too worried if the colours blended in together because that just adds to the variation in the colours and makes the finish a bit more interesting. Now the first two layers have all dried and I'm just going to put some solid colour all over the back and then that'll really shine through the glass. So we're just going to put a solid layer of mud pie. So I actually painted two coats of the mud pie on the back to get a nice solid background for the other colours and to give a nice finish on the back of the piece. When the paint has just dried, you can get a damp paper towel or a cloth and just clean up around the edges so that you've got nice straight lines around your edges. And then the last step was just to take some clear wax and just wipe it all over with a soft cloth just to seal the paint. 
You could also use a clear varnish to do this. Now you're probably wondering how you would care for these plates. You just need to wipe them down with soap and water. Best not to submerge them in any hot soapy water, but just a good wipe clean is fine. And they're perfectly safe for food as the glass surface is where the food will be touching. And here's how they turned out. I love how the colours just pop through that glass. And I really love that solid colour on the back too, as a bit of a contrast. This first green plate is where I wiped the paint back off with the soft cloth. And then you can see on the other two, they look darker because I didn't wipe the paint back. I'm not sure which I prefer. I love the lacy look of the first one, but also love the deep green on the other two. Let me know what you think. I hope this video has given you some ideas for your next project. And remember, you don't have to do exactly the same thing as me. It's really just about playing around with the paint, enjoying yourself and just creating something unique.